Hi everyone, uh, this is Professor Golestane. I'd like to show you the process of electrolysis, which I'm going to use for generating copper ions in a solution of my electrolyte. The electrolyte is magnesium sulfate, one molar concentration. And uh, I'm going to pour in uh, 130 milliliters of electrolyte into this cup. And I'm going to use 10 ml later for washing the electrodes. So the data that I would like for you to record is the first one would be the mass of the copper. So let's record the mass of the copper. This is the electrode that I'm going to use to generate copper ions in the solution. The, the balance is already zeroed out. So the mass of this is 20.617 grams. Please record that. Okay, so then we would connect my positive side. So there is my power supply. My power supply is set to one amp of current. So the current is set one amp. Once it gets going, you'll see 1.00 amps here. And so you need to record that as well. Once we get going, you'll see it. And um, uh, that's pretty much it. So and I'm going to set an electrolysis time of nine minutes. So we're, gonna, we're passing uh, coulombs equivalent to nine minutes and one amp, which is one coulomb per second. So you can figure this out, how many coulombs are going to be passed through the solution. So let's go ahead and add our... Um, stuff here so we have our electrolyte there is 50 I've already measured the volumes this is another 50 that's 100 and then we have 30 more milliliters this is 130 and as I said I'm setting aside 10 milliliters for washing the electrodes after I'm done and it's the same magnesium sulfate uh, so it will dilute it a bit down so the total volume is 140 milliliters now I'm going to use a carbon graphite uh, uh, cathode this is where reduction takes place it's a plastic separator because the two electrodes cannot come in contact with each other if they do the current just bypasses the solution and passes through the wire. We don't want that. So I'm just going to put the plastic facing the other side and connect my negative side. And notice what happens as soon as I start and connect these two, you're going to see one amp passing through. Oops. So there is bubbling taking place on our cathode, that's what we expected. And then the anode is gradually turning the solution into a copper ion solution. So copper ions are sort of like shedding off from the anode. Copper is more dense, so it tends to sink down to the bottom of my beaker, and I'll show you. And uh, the bubbles of hydrogen are released from the other side. So let's take a look and see what we got. And so now you can see very clearly what's happening here. So there is my... So the electrode to your right is the cathode bubbles. And you can see that on the surface of copper, you can actually see on this copper yellowish uh, metal on the left there is like a bluish tint and that's formation of copper ions and you can actually see it forming on the bottom because copper ions are more dense so they're kind of like sinking to the bottom so this is very clear view of what's happening sometimes in the lab you don't even get this view because I'm actually bringing everything close up to you through the camera. So the other thing that's happening here that's hard to see now but it will be more visible soon is 
formation of copper hydroxide. So you're going to see that as the solution forms, becomes more basic because our cathode is putting out hydroxide ions, the copper metal that turns into a copper ion, it causes the copper ion to have a higher concentration to the point that it would produce copper hydroxide. And that's what we'll be gradually seeing, the solution becoming more cloudy. In fact, you can see it turning more cloudy and a precipitate of copper hydroxide will form. So I will be adding sulfuric acid just to make sure that there is no um, uh, copper hydroxide once I get done with this solution. So this is going to go on for nine minutes to make sure we have the necessary copper ion concentration in this solution. And uh, I would also be asking you to calculate the molarity of the solution. That's why it's important to know the volume of this. So record that you have 140. It's actually 140.0 because of these graduate cylinders precision. I can, I can get down to a tenth of a milliliter. So when I get done with this, it'll be 140.0 milliliter of solution. And I'm going to reweigh the copper after the nine minutes. And you'll see how much copper loss we have. But we can actually more precisely calculate it based on the coulombs that we're passing through the solution. And the coulombs are related to the amperage, which is 1.00 in 4 sig fig. And our time is very good precision in at least 3 sig fig of precision. I'm going to get my time in seconds. So the solution is definitely turning more bluish. And in fact, I'll bring the camera down so you can see the progression of electrolysis. So you'll clearly see a much more deeper blue color solution. So it's getting hard to even see through it because of the precipitates. So we'll stop this. All right, nine minutes exactly. And now I'm going to remove these wires from the electrodes. And as I said, I'm going to wash these electrodes into the container. So let's go ahead and wash off our carbon first. We we'll have this electrolyte here. Okay, this is pretty good. And I'm going to do the same with the copper. There is some flaking that happens. You're passing a lot of current through the solution. So some of the copper metals just flake off and you can't just avoid but losing that. So there it is. So you have 140 milliliters, 0 0.0, actually 140.0 milliliters of the solution there. So this one has, as I said, the copper hydroxide. So copper is in the hydroxide. But I want to see how close I get to my theoretical calculation. So let's reweigh our copper. It is 20.439 grams. So my copper is good. All right, so we are done with this process now. Let's go ahead and acidify our copper solution. And let's see what's going to happen. So I'm going to 
Um, actually, I'm gonna just try to just mix it like this so that I don't, I don't lose any of my solution for now. So let's just go ahead and add like maybe like one to three drops is what I added. So let's see if that does the job. I am going to mix it because this is not it needs a little bit of help with mixing. And so once I mix this, then I'm not worried about losing my solution. So it's still you can see it's still a little murky, so I'm gonna add like a few more drops, two, three more drops there. So let's see what happens. There you go. See what happened. Copper hydroxide dissolved. In the presence of acid, there's probably not a whole lot of excess, excess acid, just a little bit. And you have your clear solution of copper ions. So anyway, we have our solution now. So we can now do the rest of the experiment, with, which I will show you in the other videos. Okay, that's it.